Hey everybody, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the ZMF Atrium Closed, a very special headphone for me for several reasons, actually, and some of that just comes with time and some experiences and memories I've had over the past year. Uh, so I'm gonna share a little bit of that backstory to help kind of uh, paint a picture of what this headphone sounds like to me, what it means to me, what I think it represents, that type of thing. And then by the end of the review, if you're using this video to determine if it's something you want to buy, hopefully this helps make your decision a little bit easier. So we are going to talk about open versus close because this is a close back. We're going to talk about a couple other ZMF products and even where this stacks up against other close back premium headphones as well. Uh, this is special. So it's $2,500, which is a very high uh, cost of entry. Now, since releasing this, ZMF has also released the Boca which is um, an $1,100 closed back headphone, designed to be a little bit more portable, but if you're concerned with price, that at least cuts it more than in half. I haven't reviewed that yet, but you know I will compare it to it down the road when I eventually get to hear one. So the Atrium Closed, it uses the same driver as the Atrium Open, but obviously being a closed back, they have a unique dampening system inside. It's called the Atrium Dampening System, or ADS. It's a proprietary thing that comes from hours and days and months of research in fact i think zach said it took years to kind of get to this level um, to where he was happy with the performance zach being the owner of zmf so it's special it's not just a closed back cover on a, a normally open back headphone but we will talk about some of the similarities i don't have the open here so i'm only gonna speak in generalities now my particular version is 2500 this is the aged cherry with the coffee gold uh, posts here. I'm using the stock Caldera uh, leather pads, which is stock being the thickness of it. They have a thin and they have a thick. They also have other materials such as suede. They have cow leather, which is a thicker leather. And the descriptions on the ZMF site is hilarious for this one. I think they refer to it as like a bomber jacket type leather. Um, they all impact the sound. They impact the comfort. And I'll talk about some of what my pads did to the sound and, and how I perceived it but also do some research. There's some other pad materials as well, not just what I have uh, shown before you today. Now I wanna start by saying this, if you're configuring one of these for your own, there's a lot of configurations options, configurations options online, but that doesn't mean you're stuck in that box of options. If you have genuine questions or are curious about something, you can email them. There are, I will have a link in the description below if you ever wanna reach out to ask questions. They are a very personal company. These are very personal products in my opinion because a lot of hand assembly, they have unique finish options, and I don't think you'll ever get two units that are identical. So it's a pretty special piece, and I think they respect that because it's not a you know fully machine-based type of process. So as far as configurations go, I already mentioned this is 2500 as is with the stock pad and a basic cable um, termination of your choice. And then you have the option to change the wood finish, the pads, even the chassis. So this is an aluminum chassis, which weighs just under 500 grams. I think it's like 496 grams on my scale with the Caldera stock lambskin pads. There is an option to switch the chassis from aluminum to magnesium, which is going to shave off another 34 grams at the cost of $250. The magnesium is uh, painted instead of anodized. So just keep that in mind. It will wear differently over time. If you generally leave these at home and you, know, you set your height here and everything's kind of you know, built to your liking, you know, maybe you won't handle the top as much and that won't be as much of an issue. Now, as far as basic specs go, this is a 300 ohm bio driver, biocellulose uh, driver, which has a different kind of burn in break in process than some others. And when you compare it to the Verite closed and open that uses a beryllium driver and they both have their own unique sonic qualities to them. The bio driver uh, being the base quality and impact is quite awesome. And they also have a really smooth vocal delivery. So the, the driver material choice isn't the exclusive decider on how something's going to sound. So uh, just because this happens to use a bio driver, don't assume that another bio driver product is going to have the same tonality and you know bass performance as this. There's a lot of variables, pads, ear cup design, the dampening system inside, especially on a closed back. There are a lot of variables to it. But uh, as far as the sonic differences of the Atrium Closed versus the Verite Closed, this is going to have more of a bass impact, more slam to it. A little bit less resolving, but consider it as like a smoother overall presentation in the uh, mid-range and upper mid-range. So 
To me, this is more in line with the sound profile I like from a closed back. And admittedly, the very first time I heard this at home, I wasn't as much of a fan of it. And it took a while to, this is part of my learning process and I want to be fully candid. So um, I found out the hard way of how some amp amps and DAC configurations can impact the sound of a headphone because I didn't. I don't want to say I wrote this off, but I was kind of like shocked at the way it sounded versus my expectation compared to how much I loved my Caldera. And then this is again on the same amp DAC chain. Now I talked to Zach for a while about this, and I was like, you know, I don't know if something's off. And admittedly, you know, he mentioned about these needing a little bit of burn in to kind of smooth out. Um, I used them for a while. There's the whole brain burden where if you listen to the same product for a while, you're going to get used to a sound anyway. But I have a lot of ed headphones to A-B it against. So one of the general things timing wise was to just bring this to a can jam show, my exact unit, and plug it into one of his amps, a better amp stack than what I had at the time, which consisted of a lot of, you know, sub four, $500 solid state amp decks. Um, nothing, you know, overly special, but nothing terrible necessarily. And these sounded so much better at Can Jam. I'm like, okay, this is starting to make more sense. Now I have the Niche Pietus Maximus, which I reviewed in the past, and I liked it so much I asked to keep one for myself. So I had to acquire it, and I love it. It's kind of like my benchmark amp because it represents a good middle ground for attainability versus performance. When I first got this, I didn't have that amp. I was using stuff from like Topping, Hi Fi Man. Um, I'm trying to think, the THX 887 amp from Monoprice, again, like I said, nothing overly crazy. That completely changed things for me. What really took this to the next level was the Niche DSHA 3FN. Now I have a review of that amp coming, I've had that amp for a while, and the pairing of the ZMF Atrium Close with the DSHA 3FN, which was originally intended more for Focalic Utopia headphones, was absolutely magic. Now that amp is even more than the headphone, but you are approaching true end game setup when you look at the whole source chain. That amp is just an amp, there's no DAC, so you do have to purchase a DAC separately, which again can add to your price, and depending on your DAC profile, that can change it too. So just to summarize, there's a lot of things here that can change it, but when you find the right setup, the Niche Pietus Maximus being one of them for me, it can be a very magical experience. I mentioned the pad choices affecting sound. I'm gonna only really focus the rest of this review using the Caldera lambskin or stock lambskin pads, which just had a sound profile I preferred over all the others. The suede's, although very comfortable on my skin, I love the way they felt. They have a little bit more um, uh, energy to the mid-range. It seems like to be a little bit more forward, but it also stunted some of the dynamics and the impact that I really liked about the Atrium Close. So for me, it wasn't really the sound profile I was looking for. The deeper pads, interestingly, certain parts actually sounded more forward and bright. Um, the bass was extended to the way I perceived the bass, but it was also slightly softer. It didn't have the same amount of tightness that I had with the thin pad. A lot of these, like if you're spending this much, you could consider other pads, and there's some good write-ups on the ZMF site on how it impacts the sound. These were pretty fun to listen to. I actually thought the uh, the cowskin pads were a, a fun change to the sound that I wasn't really expecting. The bass was still extremely tight and clean sounding. There was more energy in the upper vocals in mid-range, but there was more of a dip uh, that preceded that lift in like the two to 3,000 hertz area. And as a result, it shifted some of the vocal uh, tonality to it, like the naturalness of the voice. It was just slightly off for outside of my window of preference, personally. So, because of that, most of my listening was on this pad once I got past that, you know, long process of constantly switching pads and A-Bing things, I uh, ended up settling with these. Now briefly, just to touch on build quality and comfort, I mean, these things are absolutely gorgeous. I actually like this configuration a lot, it's very classy looking. This particular finish and the shape just feels really nice to the hand. There's a really good surface area here where I can rest my thumbs on it to put it on and off. Clamp force is adjustable on the ZMF pads or headphones because of the way the headband is built. You can literally just bend it to your liking. So if you want a stronger clamp, you could certainly do that. And then this is actually slightly off right now because I was adjusting it for my uh, rig. However, 
Once you lock in the height setting that you like to place the ear cups exactly where you want them, you can tighten these little screws here and that'll make it so the posts don't align. I actually popped off the pad trying to do that. That is one thing I'm gonna to say too, just again to be fully candid here, these pads are a little bit more difficult to keep on this particular head film. I don't know if this was stretched out. You have to keep in mind this is a demo unit. It's seen some stuff and as a result, I don't think this pad is quite as secure. It's actually the same pad that's on my Caldera and they have the same mounting design as far as the opening goes and they've never moved on that. So I think I just have a, a weird unit, but I didn't want to ignore that. As far as sound quality goes from an objective standpoint, I just want to show you how this particular headphone measures on my rig, which is using a Gross KB006X Pinaclone with an IEC 711 Coupler Clone. So it's, it's good for comparing my own measurements to other measurements that I've made, not for other people's measurements, which use you know a B&K or a real Gross system. That when you have different rigs or even mini DSP ears, all of these have different ears, pinnas, the uh, acoustic Z, if you will. Um, basically, there's a lot of variables that can impact how a rig measures the sound, so don't uh, use this to compare against other sites necessarily, at least as a one-to-one -one expectation. So, looking at the measurements, the green line represents the Caldera stock pads as I preferred to listen to it. And you can see there is a bit of emphasis in the bass region, and it has a warm tone to it. The strongest bass actually comes in closer to 50 hertz as opposed to higher frequencies often found in other audiophile products which tend to roll off or be relatively flat. The Verite Close, for example, actually shifts the peak bass node uh, up, I think, almost 50 hertz. I'm pretty sure it's close to 100 hertz, if I'm not mistaken, so it can sound a little bit more punchy but doesn't have the same depth as the Atrium Close. And the bass extension gets very close to flat all the way down to 20 hertz. There's a gentle roll off, but it's not by much. The scoop that you have here as you approach 200 hertz is actually really nice because even though this looks a little bit warmer, it doesn't necessarily play as like an overly boxy, resonating, like stuffy type bass delivery. The scoop in the 200 hertz is a really good way to kind of counter some of that. So I think that's why that's there. And then you could see a scoop in the 1.5 K area. And when you look at the upper mid range on closed backs, the general philosophy from Zach and, you know, ZMF house sound, if you will, is on a closed back, that area should be recessed more. That's their personal take because the end result is if you make that too filled in, the nature of a closed back can so sound somewhat shouty. And I actually mentioned this in my um, uh, Meze Audio Lyric 2 review that even though I like some of the things that the LCD XC does as a closed back, especially after EQ, it's really fun. The 2000 Hertz area can sound almost nasally because it's very forward on this particular headphone. And without EQ, depending on what you're listening to, it can be a very difficult listen. Conversely, the atrium close being a little bit less resolving, but also more recessed in that region makes it very easy to listen to a wide variety of tracks. Now going above that, the, the frequencies that you see on the measurement is gonna differ more from what you may hear on your ear. So I don't wanna put too much weight on these measurements, but the suede pad does fill it in a little bit more. It's gonna read as a more vocal forward sounding pad and you know, also having more upper treble as well. All of these have a very, and when I say all of these, I'm talking about the pads. The atrium has a very tame treble, especially in like the mid treble area. Nothing ever reads as too strong. It's not too sibilant, grainy. None of that is in your face, but there's a little bit of presence up top that you don't typically get on a closed back dynamic like this. It's a pretty unique characteristic, and I don't know how much is done from the driver or the dampening or the pad choice. There's, I know the ear cup design, you put a lot of work in, including materials and pad fill, but the end result is you have a closed back that can sound intimate, but still sound airy and spacious at the same time, without coming across as a sibilant treble monster. So that's a pretty incredible technical feat to pull off. So getting into the subjective side and more of uh, you know my day-to-day -day listening and interpretations of this, I, I grew to fondly like this headphone. It, it went from being a surprise, like I don't really think I like it as much as I thought I would, to it turning into one of my favorite headphones I have at the house right now. Now this isn't mine to keep. I will be sending this back out once the review is done so someone else can review it. So I don't, I don't gain anything by saying some of these things. However, there is a pretty amazing ability of connecting you with the music in such an intimate way, which, you know, this is gonna be a hard review to, to properly convey. 
to be honest, because there's a lot of buzzwords like intimacy and connection to the music and clarity and all these things. And at surface value, when you keep hearing those terms thrown around, I don't think they mean as much anymore as, as far as the general space. So when I say some of these things, I'm trying to, I want to emphasize that there is some serious weight and meaning behind some of these statements. It's literally not just me throwing out buzzwords because there, there's something about a closed back that you get a level of intimacy of done right that certain open backs can't give you if your environment isn't conducive to that. Having a loud PC fan, having cars driving by, you're in an area that maybe has a workspace, but you still want to enjoy your music. There's always a trade-off, and I almost always prefer an open back whenever I can use it because there's a naturalness to the, the timbre, the mid-range, you're not dealing with inner reflections, all of these things that can color the sound into me, uh, which is a negative thing that I don't really like. So you lose that intimacy when environment variables are now being considered. And at the same time, maybe you're in a quiet environment and you don't want other people to hear you. So there are certain use cases for a closed back. When the environment isn't perfect and you switch to a closed back, if the closed back executes the timbre that to this level, you still feel so much more connected to the music and that alone is a very special experience in particular with the atrium close it really was the standout thing for me now to further uh, i guess add praise to the headphone and what has changed my perception of it is i haven't used a lot of good well i have so let's be clear here my dynamic headphones and my planar headphones that i've been reviewing lately are not necessarily known for dynamics um, you know, punchiness, slam, impact. And as a result, I've had a really difficult time recommending headphones to people when they ask about which headphones for rock and metal music because I have a very different interpretation of what I like to listen to as far as the sound profile goes. If you've ever gone to like a smaller, and I don't want to say garage band uh, performance, but smaller concert, you know, I'm talking like a few hundred people, and they hook up the bass guitar, they have their acoustics, all these instruments are connected to amps, not like a professional PA system, but there's a certain kind of like almost resonance and energy you can feel in live performance, rock and guitars, and even some metal that you almost always lose on a headphone. And that's why I usually like listening to speakers when I listen to rock because I want visceralness to the music. It conveys more of the emotion and connection to the song. My Sennheiser headphones that I've reviewed recently, uh, the Meze uh, Empyrean and uh, Lyric 2, for example, some of the LCD products from Odyssey, they all have good bass to different levels, um, but they didn't have strong dynamics and punch. And as a result, I never really fell in love with a headphone for rock until I finally put these on and I was reminded why people like the Atrium and Atrium Close so much, because this was like a totally different experience for me and I, I started changing my typical audio playlist because once I'm getting taste of how much I like rock music and the dynamics and the punch, I was like, finally. So I started going through all of my favorite rock songs. And I think that speaks a lot in to what this headphone can do because as a reviewer, I have my audiophile playlists. I check for tonalities. I check for layering, macro dynamics, when a track gets busy, how accurate is the voice? How subtle is my detail retrieval? But when you listen to a headphone like this and you're like, screw that, I wanna listen to Tool, I wanna listen to Slipknot, I wanna listen to Deftones, you know, all these different types of, it, well, some of those are great for audio file testing, admittedly. However, it, it's just cool when it starts driving your listening for the night. And I think that makes it a very memorable experience. Now, I also don't wanna paint the picture that this can only do that because there are a lot of other things it does excellent as well. It does color the sound a little bit, but think of it as coloring the sound in a relatively tasteful and subdued way. The vocals are a little bit more intimate. They are a little bit denser and warmer sounding, but it doesn't sound nasally, doesn't sound too recessed. I'm not making a female vocal drop several, several octaves because this is adding so much bass to it. It really doesn't do that. It just has a very smooth delivery in the bass and the texture 
of vocals is incredible. It doesn't lose that essence from the atrium open. It just shifts it with more bass impact to go with it. So I think some people are actually going to like the atrium closed more than the atrium open if you've been craving that extra um, you know, punch from the bass. Now the upper treble performance, the space, the soundstage is also really wide on this, but in a deceiving way. When you first put it on, you don't immediately read like, wow, this is super bright and airy. It just comes across as a very natural sounding stage. Part of that has to do with the pad design. He has uh, angled pads on here and the overall size of it, how far it is from your ear, all of these things can modify how you perceive that airiness and extension. Even the pad uh, perforation, which you know, the stock one has a solid inner pad and then you have perforated outside, which can affect transients a little bit, you know, your attack and decay. Um, this was to me, again, the best balance of all of it. There's also full perforation pads if you want it to sound uh, a little bit looser and more airy. You can always do that to shift it a little bit. Regardless of which pad you do though, um, I think the big takeaway here, in addition of all the stuff I said about rock and dynamics and, and texturing, is this doesn't have the most detail retrieval. It's not as technical as some other headphones. So I want to talk about a few here because I have some behind me too. I have the Sennheiser HD 800S open back. Here's the Odyssey LCD XC, the Meze Lyric 2, and there's the Hyphaman uh, HE 1000 SE, and I have the Arias as well. All of these have a better resolution when it comes to technicalities and detail retrieval. The ZMF Caldera, their flagship that I purchased, this is mine that I had custom built because I love the Caldera. They're more uh, technically proficient at retrieving the subtle most detail in the track. Now they do it in different ways and sometimes it's not always a good thing. It's, it's almost like being more connected to the wire than it is some kind of middleman relaying the music to you. This does drop some of that off, but uh, it can be a reward or a positive in a sense that if you listen to some tracks that aren't recorded as well, that normally aren't your audiophile tracks, but you just love the song, this is a better headphone for stuff like that because it lets you focus more on the song with less distractions from maybe it being a poorly recorded track, where there's some graininess, you hear hiss, you hear sibilance because the, you know, the vocal has a strong S or something like that. So, it is a very forgiving sound profile, but it's still resolving enough to where you're still getting a premium listening experience. It's not like you're paying all this and then you know losing out on details. It's definitely not to that level. It's just like a happy middle ground. Now I may get asked about how this performs for gaming, so I'm gonna do a really quick thing here. It's fine for gaming. It has a lot of bass. It's gonna be very immersive, and it being a closed back is actually kind of nice because if you're gaming on a high-end computer with loud fans, you probably want a closed back just to reduce that noise floor Imaging is excellent on this. I mean, it actually is kind of sensitive to placement. Because the ear cups are so large, you can shift it forward or back, up, down even. There's a little bit of wiggle room. That will affect how you perceive frequency response, you know, your bass, mids, and treble, and it will affect how it images in your head. So in gaming, if you want a more forward sound stage, just position them forward a little bit, um, and it'll reward you with that shift in imaging. It's totally fine for gaming. It's just not like a hyper detail headphone. You know, when you look at the Aria Stealth or the HD800S from Sennheiser, those are a little bit more analytical and clear, but you don't have the same warmth and intimacy that you get with this. So if you're playing single player games or something with a lot more bass and impact, then you want to go with something like this. Now I have the Caldera out because frankly, I, I just love looking at it. <laughs> I, it was the only other ZMF headphone I have, and I don't think they directly stand up to each other. You know, you have an open back Caldera planar magnetic headphone versus a closed back biodynamic, but I think they're a great complement to each other because what this does is very different than this, but both of them can be used interchangeably for a lot of the same tracks and it's almost like looking through the track through a different lens. The dynamics and punch of this is no joke. And in some songs and tracks, I prefer the Atrium Closed over my favorite headphone of all time so far, ZMF Caldera. And the reinvigorated excitement about listening to rock on headphones again, which I really haven't felt that much excitement and joy on, to be honest, for months. I've really been lacking on the rock department. This kind of rekindled that, and I think that's the best thing I can say about it. I love the way everything sounds on this, even though sometimes other headphones may do it a little bit better. This just does everything so well. So if you're in the market for a close back, I think the Atrium Close is worth a serious consideration. 
ZMF goes to a lot of shows. They're in a lot of different shops. So you can always try to demo one if you can, but uh, just reach out to them if you have any questions. I will have links in the description below to help you find these. I get no kickbacks. There's no marketing thing or anything like that. I just genuinely love these headphones. And I wouldn't be surprised to eventually have one of these in my collection this year because I, I'm gonna, I like listening to rock and I wanna do it on headphones sometimes. So I feel like I'm gonna need to have one of these in my collection for myself. So thank you so much for watching. I didn't really wanna script this because there's a lot more than just the basic you know, ABCs of describing audio. And I hope you found the video helpful. Um, I'd love to see it the next one. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.